you have all registered for uh, the class on fighting spiritual warfare in the kingdom. Um, I'd like to start out first by um, a word of prayer. So if you bow your heads, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you asking you to take over, Lord God, and I ask that you go before me, Lord God, May what I speak and teach is something that edifies you first and foremost, and that is helpful to those who are in attendance and in my hearing. In Jesus' name I pray and I thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 So, fighting warfare in the kingdom. I have given, does everyone have a handout? Mm -hmm. And a survey. Yeah. Okay. Fighting warfare in the kingdom of this class, and let me put this disclaimer out there. This is really um, meant to whet your appetite um, and give you some nuggets to help you um, not only know and recognize the, the physical signs of warfare, but also the spiritual signs of warfare. And so our purpose is to look at warfare and how to engage in fighting from a strategic standpoint, which will help you identify the enemy's tactics in key areas of your life. So first and foremost, I'd like to start off with, um, if someone could read Ephesians 6, verse 10 through 20 for me, Thank you. Last of all, I want to remind you that your strength must come from the Lord's mighty power within you. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand safe against all strategies and tricks of Satan. But we are not fighting against people made of flesh and blood, but against persons without bodies, the evil rulers of the unseen world, those mighty satanic beings and great evil princes of darkness who rule this world and against huge numbers of wicked spirits in the world. So use every piece of God's armor to resist the enemy whenever he attacks you. And when it is all over, you will be standing up. But to do this, you will need the strong belt of truth and the breastplate of God's approval. Wear shoes that are able to speed you on as you preach the good news of peace with God. In every battle, you will need faith as your shield to stop the fiery arrows aimed at you by Satan. And you will need the helmet of salvation and the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray all the time. Ask God for anything in line with the Holy Spirit's wishes. Plead with him, reminding him of your need. And keep praying honestly for all Christians everywhere. Pray for me too, and ask God to give me the right words as I boldly tell others about the Lord, and as I explain to them that his salvation is for the Gentiles too. I am in chains now for the preaching, for preaching this message from God. But pray that I will keep on speaking out boldly for him, even here in prison, as I should. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So, when we look at this, Paul wrote this letter to the people in Ephesus. And we have to remember that this was a body of people who knew God. They knew the Lord. So, he was not preaching or speaking to people who did not know God, who had no awareness of him. So this is strategic to helping us fight battles that we may face um, ourselves as Christians. So I want to take a look at the battle gear that was worn. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. So it was definitely a spiritual war, but it was also during the Roman times, 
an actual physical war. So this was also to help them when they were fighting battle um, during those times. So we are, for the sake of this class and time, we're just going to look at some key areas of the battle gear, the breastplate, the helmet, the shield, the sword, and prayer. Now, I like to think about when Jesus fasted for 40 days and he was attacked by the enemy. So if, if Jesus was attacked, it makes us think that we will not be attacked. And the enemy comes when what? When we are at our weakest point, when we are at our weakest mentally, spiritually, physically, that's when Satan tries to attack. So again, my hope is that we're going to take a look at some of these key areas. The first piece um, of armor being the breastplate. What is the breastplate meant to protect? Yes, amen. Um, primarily, the soldiers wore this breastplate and it was meant to cover the upper body from the neck down to um, the portion of the thigh and it also protected you from the back. So it was like a full arm that they would put on to cover the upper extremities of the body. Primarily, you know, um, your lungs, kidney, um, liver, those vital areas. But most importantly, what we're gonna talk about today is the heart. Once the heart goes, that's it. We have no life, we have no being, we're done. So the enemy attacks us through our heart spiritually. Now, those attacks come by the way of like, if we, um, we like to call them little white lies, but no, they, it, it's more than that. A lie is a lie, sin is sin. So we, we, we tend to cheat, steal, complaining, all of those are forms of sin that Satan can use so subtly and get you doing that to the point where you think it's normal. Oh, it's just me. And that's who I am. You know, you know, people have to accept me as who I am. That's just me. But no, it's called the breastplate of righteousness for a reason. So we strive towards righteousness. Now, God, he is our righteousness. We have our righteousness in him. So, but we have to remember that we are made righteous by God. It's not our works, but God does that. He does that through his sanctification of us. So once you start believing in your heart, because again, the scripture says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So we want to make sure that we don't formulate things in our heart or as a pattern of life or way of life that could keep us walking in sin knowingly or unknowingly. Um, the, the word also says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. So we want to make sure that we are guarding our hearts with all diligence. I mean, we have to let the devil know that you cannot come in, manipulate anything about me. We have to stand and fight. And that's where the, the fight comes in, not with the physical fighting, but spiritually, fighting in the spirit. Now, how are we able to also, in Jeremiah, it says, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The Lord searches the heart. God says, I test the mind, even give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. I do not want to be given into um, any bad fruit. Let's put it that way. We all spirit but we want to make sure that there's no bad fruit and if there is any bad fruit that's why we are called to search ourselves god searches our heart he searches our heart so we we know that there's nothing that we can hide from god but it's for us to know hey wait a minute this is not right i shouldn't be doing this i should be doing that this is not right for me as a christian as an ambassador for christ to be performing so um, when you think about that, you want to make sure that you are, again, remembering that God searches our hearts. You know, you want God to create in you a clean heart and renew a steadfast spirit within you. 
just have to invite God into your life daily, into your heart daily, so that your heart remains pure before him. And the more that you yield to him, he will renew your heart and clean you right up, right up. The second piece of armor, the helmet. What is the helmet supposed to protect? Clearly our head. <laughs> we put a, a helmet on our head to cover our head. But what is that vital, that vital part of our body that is being protected? It's our brain. Again, just like if there's damage to the heart, damage to the brain is, oh my God, it's it's so detrimental. It's detrimental to us. Any blunt force trauma to the brain can rest conscious. We we again we have no life, no movement. Um our memories, our thoughts sometimes can leave us. And they have, it's, it's, it's a thing where it, it, it corrodes and it takes the mind mm -hmm. and your memory, your thoughts, people who you've known and things that you remember, you can no longer remember those things. Now, with the brain, the attacks that the enemy comes in is in our mind and in our thoughts. He cripples us in our mind on our thoughts about life, ourselves. This is where depression can so easily set in in people. Um, they, they, you know, if you have low self, the enemy, if you feel that you are being oppressed or you have emotional bondage, those are ways that the enemy attacks us from the inside. It's not that anyone is doing anything to you necessarily, but the attack is coming from within. So we want to definitely, the word says, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, think on these things. So you don't want to think on the negative. You want to be more optimistic, not pessimistic. Think on the good things. You know, if the enemy tries to tell you that you are not loved, I am loved. I'm loved by God. I'm loved by my family. Most importantly, I love myself. You have to fight that what that on um, that that attack with the word, with your knowledge base. And you you have to definitely have those things inside of you. Utilize praise. Utilize um, the declarations. You got to decree a thing, declare a thing over your life. Um, speak positive affirmations over your life. Be diligent. Take authority over those thoughts. Take them captive so that the enemy does not have his way in your life. Of pandemic, a lot of people have been struck with fear, with um, anxiety, just so many things. The enemy is using this, this time and this season so like to his advantage. But we we do not have to succumb to it. We do we have weapons to fight it. Um, we have weapons to cover our family and our children with it. So the enemy, those attacks, definitely we want to be aware of them. Don't think that the enemy is going to treat us kindly because we're in a pandemic. He's not. <laughs> He's not. Mm -hmm. The next weapon is our shield, the shield. <laughs> the shield of faith. What is the shield used to protect? So in the Roman days, um, the shield was actually also something that was used to protect the body. Um, it was about two feet wide, four feet long, made of wood, leather, iron, and it was of a proportionate size that it can cover you from the front, or sometimes they would use it, um, they would dip it in water, and they would, it, it had interlocking pieces so they could lock their shields together and use that as like a, 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 a barrage or a brigade to keep forces out or forces from attacking them. Arrows, they dipped it in water so that any arrows that came with fire would be extinguished. So that's how the shield was used. Um, 
Now, how we use the shield today in our spiritual walk, it says by our faith. It's the shield, it's called the shield of faith for us today because we don't walk around with shields. <laughs> our shield is our faith. Now, how many know that faith is an action word? <laughs> we have to walk by faith, not by sight, but we also have to put our faith into action. Faith without works is dead, the scripture says. Faith by itself and faith without works is dead. So when you know that faith is, is an action word, you want to build up your faith. How do we build up our faith? Do you trust God? Faith is our level of trust in God, knowing that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever think, hope, or so when you utilize your faith, that's standing on faith. I believe God wholeheartedly. I trust him during these times. I trust him where I can't see him. I trust him that he's going to bring me through. So you want to, it's going to cause you to stretch your faith by action, not just using lip service and saying, Lord, I trust you, but he's going to put you to the test. If you trust me, trust me with this area of your life. If you trust me, trust me with your finances, trust me with your family, trust me with your job, trust me to be the provider that he says he will be in his word. Amen. So we want to make sure that our faith is unwavering, that we trust him wholeheartedly, that um that we use demonstrations of our acts of faith so that he can grow us grow our confidence in him we, we get more boldness and courage the more that we declare what god's word says about us and how we can activate our faith in him so you want to definitely make sure that you are utilizing your faith stepping up stepping out on faith in different ventures of your life the next part of the weaponry, the sword. How is the sword designed to protect? Well, the sword is one of those, how do you say? It's one of those weapons that we use, it's, it's used to for the offensive, basically. So it's not something that we wield that well, the Roman soldiers would wield it against the enemy. So, you know, a, a, a sword is longer than a, a dagger or a blade. It's it's longer, but there are different sizes of the sword at during those times. So we want to use the sword, which is the sword of the spirit. And we're using the sword of the spirit. How? And today we're using the sword of the spirit through the word of God, as the scripture says. Now, everybody knows, the enemy knows the word just like we do. So <laughs> when, the, when the word, when we stand on the word, we have to definitely know the word for ourselves. We have to build up our spiritual word bank. We have to make sure that we have so much of the word in us. The, you know, the word says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. We have to have so much word in us that we are using as a sword to attack the enemy, to cut the enemy's head off, to, to, to ever him, you know, not with the physical sword, but with the spiritual sword of the word of God that we can call on it at a moment's notice because our word bank is there. It's just like a bank. Your money and your bank account is only as good as the money that you deposit into it. If you don't put it in there, what are you withdrawing? <laughs> Nothing. So when the enemy comes and attacks, you have to be able to withdraw on what's already on the inside of you, the word. So I encourage you to build up your word bank. You have to build up your word bank so that you are able to stand during the times when the enemy attacks. Our next area, the power of prayer. Now, prayer is a weapon. It's a weapon in battle. Um, as an intercessor, I use prayer daily and strategically. 
when you are in the presence of God through prayer, you are able to make known, he makes known to us what's on his heart, but we are also able to hear God and step in and intercede and pray for those things that we want to see happen, that God wants to see happen here on earth, here in the kingdom, in the body of, of believers. So you have to be a person of prayer. Prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. I can't stress that enough. Now, if, if we look at our posture before God in prayer, there are many postures. You can kneel. You can lay prostrate before him. You can be walking, speaking, meditating quietly. People don't even know that you're praying. But the key is to spend that quality time with him in prayer so that you know his heart and know his will for your lives. Again, the enemy comes to distort what our true destiny is, to distort what our purpose is, to keep us from walking in our destiny, walking in our purpose. And we have to be mindful of that. It may look differently for each and every one of us. We have to recognize what that is for us individually, personally, internally, because it's different for everyone. Now, how else should we pray? We should pray in the spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. My God, praying in the spirit is, is a secret language. The enemy does not understand it. So we have to we have to build up. It also builds us up. When we pray in our heavenly language, pray in the spirit, it builds us up. We don't know what we're saying to God, but God knows. He hears. He knows what our hearts are saying when we're speaking in our tongue, when we are speaking in the spirit. So I encourage you to build up your spirit. Man, if you don't know how to speak in tongues, I encourage you, pray, ask God to, to give you that, 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 that spirit, to give you the tongues so that you can communicate with him. The, the enemy, it, the enemy doesn't know. It's a secret coded language. It's like an SOS signal when, you know, the military, they send SOS signals out so that the other people that are able to help them, they know what those signals mean. They are able to come to their aid. That's what God wants to do to us or for us, come to our aid. So when we speak in our heavenly language, that opens up the heavens and the airways for him to do that. So we can, it's like a sneak attack on the enemy. We're able to stand in the gap, pray for God to move mightily, pray for him to move all power in our situations and in our circumstances. And I'm grateful to spirit and, and day by day move more in his spirit and more in tune with his spirit through difficult times. The time about my screen. Okay. So in conclusion, again, the key points that I want to want you to remember, and again, this was just a synopsis and a short, a short point of reference to get you to think more and in a, a more internal retrospect of your lives and where you are in Christ, where you are in your standpoint during the battle. Um, we need to guard our hearts. And again, guard, guard our hearts with all diligence. We need to guard our mind and our thoughts. We want to make sure that the enemy does not have an entry point to overtake us, but yet we will overtake him and his kingdom here on earth. That is our goal. Our chief end, man's chief end is to glorify God here on earth. So we need to do that at all costs. We do that through praise, through worship. Through, through staying in the word, not just picking up the, you know, um, maybe once a week, once a month. No, daily picking up the word, daily seeking God through prayer. We need to activate our faith. Thank you. Again, faith is the substance of things 
hope for the evidence is not seen. We don't walk by what we see. Always remember that. We're not walking by what we see in the world. The world didn't give anything to us and the world can't take anything away from us. So we have to remember, activate your faith. Whatever that is in your life, activate it. Allow God to take you to higher heights and deeper depths in him through your faith. Speak the word of God. Hear those things not as though they were over your lives, um, over, over your ministry, over your destinies. Speak the word of God. And again, and lastly, pray at all times. You want to make sure that you are prayerful. I can't express any more or articulate any more. Prayer is key. That is how God communicates with us. That is how we are able to know the intel to over, overcome and defeat the enemy because we are overcomers. We are warriors. We are warriors, mighty warriors in the kingdom. But God wants us to know that. God wants us to walk in that. God wants us to know that we have all of the weapons available to us to defeat the enemy when we are facing a battle. So again, I encourage you all to keep that at the forefront. Keep those nuggets at the forefront of your daily walk. Seek him daily. It's, it's, it's no harm in asking him to come into your heart daily. Lord, I need your help daily. I mean, we are definitely walking epistles of the word. So when we call on the word, speak the word, call on God, he is ever present, ever present help in time of trouble. Amen. So I'll take this time if there are any questions that anyone has, anything that you want to elaborate on. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. You just pray. You you humble yourself before Him, and you can do that in your prayer time, and because He sees and knows our heart, and if you desperately desire the in in the infilling and the indwelling of the holy spirit to the point where, you, where you're, you're you're blessed and gifted to speak in tongues he will honor that and it's 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 so humbling and and it's such a, a presence when when you're doing that when you are speaking in tongues and you feel the, the fire of God and his spirit present with you when you're praying. And again, we don't know what we're saying when we're speaking in our heavenly language and in tongues, mm -hmm. but God knows. So if you're not filled with the spirit or able to speak in tongues, pray and ask God to fill. Bit, but I don't know who can't be known just in him. Praise God. Um, the deal is Speaking in tongues is just a drunk. No, it comes from the spirit. Amen. And the spirit dwells in our heart. And so as you begin to read and speak the word of God, and you get into that posture, and then some of us constantly mention, mm -hmm. and you begin to prostrate before him, and you begin to think on his word, because like I said, you're meditating on that word day and night, you're meditating on that word day, you're praying daily. So then you just gonna open yourself up and praise God and then just receive. Just just receive. Amen. Just receive. Don't even think about how we're gonna receive. Just open up your heart, open up your mouth, begin to praise and adore your God. And then he by his spirit is gonna come in and fill your heart Amen. and spirit to the full. And you're gonna and you just gonna begin to start speaking others that he just 
Yes. And I don't know what you want to I don't make fun of that you know. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That I was gonna say. Yep. Every day, just just in your prayer time, when you're just praising him and giving him thanks, start practicing, and and, and he will. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Anyone else have any questions? Anything to add? Thank you, Minister LeBlue, for that. I like saying it's over my shield and um, the arrows coming with fire and they get them in water. Distinguish the fire. Those and so I just imagine, like, you know, somebody coming to me with some fire. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But that was the great visual, you know, like instead of him with the fire, the responding back with fire. Right. No, put your faith. And that is your spirit. That's how you use that schedule instead of you questioning weapons. And you're pushing all those fiery darts. Amen. Instead of from different angles. That that was powerful. I just like that visual. Yes. Yes. It it would, yeah. So because of course when there's shields or interlocked together, there are little pockets where arrows or things can penetrate or get through, but it's being extinguished because they've already wet the armor, the, the shield. So it's it's dripping on the inside as it's covering the soldiers, but it's also extinguishing any fire that may try to come through.